and welcome to Enter the Glory Zone with me, Dr. Edith Davis, on 94.1 FM, Wave 94. Spiritual believers and listeners, once again, I'm going to get directly to the Word because I think this is a a rhema word, a, a now word, a, a necessary word. That's for the kingdom of God, it's for the people of God, and it's for the world. Spiritual believers, I have been commissioned by Daddy God, you have Lord God, Holy Spirit, and and Yahshua Mashiach, Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior, to talk about how to divorce proof your marriage. I was able to get, I think, eight or nine episodes broadcast done and had to switch for to talk about two very important things. Um, Jesus Christ being the solution to racism. Jesus Christ is the solution to everything. And also, I recently um, talked about, do we really know who God is? And He is a God of love, but He's also a God of justice. And so now I'm, I want to come back to how to divorce-proof your marriage. And I want to get straight into Jimmy Evans' four laws of love and um, the first law is the law of um, priority that um, your marriage is should be the number one priority um, and and then your children and then your job and everything else um, marriage is the first um, governmental institution that daddy got you hey um, established on planet Earth, and one of the interesting things people need to understand about the Word of God is when God decreed the four laws. And if you maintain those four laws, um, your marriage will be divorce proof. Um, he talked about the um, the husband leaving the family and cleaving to his wife, and um, those things, and them cleaving to one another. And you need to recognize that Adam and the Adams, male Adam and female Adam, had no mother, no father. I guess you would say they were the first humans um, created with no umbilical cord. So, obviously, Daddy God, you Yuhevahe, when he gave this decree to the Adams on how their marriage should be conducted, he knew that this was for future generations because Adam's Adam's mother and father was God the Father, God the Son, and God the Lord Holy Spirit, right? So the law of priority, and this is where right out of the gate, many marriages miss this because they don't know how to continue honoring their parents yet placing their their husband placing their wives um, before their parents and it's not that you don't care about your parents or make sure their needs are not taken care of but that the number one priority now is your spouse is your husband is your wife um, the second law of love that if you maintain this you divorce proof your marriage is the law of per- pursuing, right? So, this is very critical. This is where, w- once again, most marriages uh, off the rails soon after the honeymoon is because they don't put the effort into dating, continuing to date. It's it's when you're dating, you're oh so careful. You you're you're very concerned about. How you dress, how you talk, how you interface with the person that you have your affections upon, right? And so it is very, very critical that the number two law of love for marriage, the keep it divorce proof, is to continue to pursue, to continue to date, to continue prioritizing. And one of the most single Culprits now that we have to deal with is the cell phone, and I I've talked about this myself. This was a problem. I didn't realize how much a problem it was, but it it was a part of the ingredients that cost me my almost thirty years of marriage. 
right? So the phone has to be put in its place. It should not be at the dinner table. It should not be in the bedroom as far as when you're trying to have intimacy with your spouse, for sure. When you're having supernatural sex, you shouldn't be concerned about the cell phone, right? So the cell phone needs to be put in its place, along with all other distractions, including your children. So it's not that you don't take care of like your parents. You take care of your children. You make sure their needs are met. You love them. You train them. But you're preparing your children to leave you. And so you need to make sure that you do the things necessary to take care of your children, but that you teach your children to respect your private time, to respect the intimacy that is so necessary in marriage. So now let's get to the third law, the the law of partnership. And this is where, you know, we once again lose it again because of the fall. The male was placed over the female. But once you are born again, once you accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you go back to the role where your husband and wife are partners. Yes, they have different roles, but they are partners. There should be no decision made without consulting the spouse, right? The partnership is not only about how you maintain your marriage, but also it's about how you maintain your family and how you're going to make sure you the partnership there should be at least two annual retreats one an annual retreat with the father the husband and the wife where they come together but like separate in the mornings and they both get with the lord about what is what is the lord telling them about what he wants the family to do this year right so then we have the next um, issue of the next retreat is about each child. What is the destiny? What is God's destiny for each child? And what can the husband and wife do to assure that these children reach their divine destiny? Right? So the, the retreat is very, very critical. And I wish we had done this in my marriage, but we didn't. And the enemy, I think of many times where the enemy had me thinking it, not well of my former husband. And I know the enemy had my former husband not thinking well of me. It was my husband that filed for the divorce. I was always fighting for the marriage. And being raised Roman Catholic, I was anti-divorce. I knew that we had problems, but I was hoping that we would get to a, a point in the marriage after I got my doctorate from Baylor University that we were able to 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 um, come together. But unfortunately, the enemy was working very hard to destroy our marriage and my former husband and I helped Satan do a lot of the work ourselves. So we need to understand about the the law of partnership and that we need to go back to the original plan, which was that the atoms worked in unity. They worked in one and they together, they actually completed the, um, what God wanted in mankind and in uh, a family unit, right? And so basically the fall basically put a wedge between the man and the woman and God put the wedge himself. God pronounced the curse. People need to go read it. God the Father pronounced a curse on marriage. But when the blood of Jesus came, it... Uh, it wiped away the curse. So when you're born again and you're married, then you should have a, the the ideal godly marriage that God had ordained in the from the beginning of time 
in the Garden of Eden, right? Which was absolutely exquisite and lovely and fruitful. And they were to be fruitful. They would subdue the earth. They were to um, multiply, right? And replenish the earth, right? So they had they had their te- they had their duties, and they did it in harmony, not in an adversarial role, not um, one upping anybody, not um, matter of fact, being a servant to the other. So when they both served each other and looked after each other's best interests then you didn't ever have to worry about one of the partners not receiving what they needed to be fruitful, to, to multiply, to, to replenish and subdue the earth, right? I always say that a team, a male and a female team, under the leadership of Christ Jesus, is almost un, undefeatable. I mean, they, they, they have such different perspectives that match so well in seeing the whole picture, dealing with the holistic issues of the problems that are set before them. So the fourth law, of course, is the law of what? The law of purity. And not only keeping yourself to, to one another exclusively but purity in your thoughts about one another purity in your in your deeds and your activities and your actions always trying to think the best of one another always trying to do the best by one another and I basically you know think that that the law of purity is so important to marriage and Satan has violated and beat that area up so badly and it's it's so critical in order to divorce proof your marriage so number one the law of priority number two the law of pursuing the number three the law of partnership and the law number four the law of purity so what does this mean? Of course, this actually plays into what I've talked about before, which was um, understanding that you're dating the representative, that you're not really seeing the total person that you're really going to be married to. Um, you need to understand that supernatural sex can be obtained if you serve one another and love one another the husband loving the wife like Christ loved the church which means that Christ died for the church and the woman honoring and respecting and also loving the husband as well and and when you couple with your spouse in the spiritual realm first and you couple with your spouse in the soulish realm second and you couple with your spouse in the physical realm last then you're going to have supernatural sex which is a wonderful thing and this area has been beaten up quite a bit by Satan and his minions so we need to be clear that it is it is very important that you divorce proof your marriage. Everybody gets married and everybody's in love and everybody's in probably lust too um, with their spouse. But the world quickly, quickly um, beats up the marriage. And, and, and I've noticed a pattern. It's, it's a similar pattern. It's like one of the first things that happens is one of the spouses or both of the spouses loses their job. The Satan um, attacks um, the income of the family. There, um, the other thing is that, that he um, attacks the intimacy in the marriage. Um, and also you have the forces of, of family and friends who um, want to um, usurp the um, the roles that you are supposed to have with your spouse, and and you have to 
I guess I guess you would say I'm listening to Andrew Warmack about having a prepared heart, which basically means is that you decide from the very beginning before any problems happen, you decide in the very beginning divorce will never be mentioned in our household. The divorce is never to be an option in our household. Respect and honor should be a main priority in our household. We should keep ourselves to one another exclusively. And when one person is feeling a little um, not cared for, communicate this. Understand that um, that the spouse, one of the rules in in marriage is that the woman's body belongs to her husband and the husband's body belongs to the man to the woman to the to wife okay so we we must make sure that we are serving our spouses and meeting their needs that we our spouses have different love languages we need to learn the love language of our spouse and we need to communicate in that language and we need to always try to keep our spouses number one priority now one of the interesting things that I did was I was very much into affirmations and I would send them emails and notes there was a season for several years where I sent a lot of emails and um, notes um, basically you know letting um, him know that he was important he was a priority and so that's very 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 critical we also need to make sure that when you get married that you have similar ideas about how to handle the finances and how to raise children because these areas can become quite contentious in the area of marriage also understand that if your marriage is really in shaky ground children unless you have a clear understanding of how you want to raise your kids and it it could jeopardize your marriage if you don't have those certain things that we've already discussed earlier which is prioritizing your marriage having a common understanding of how you're going to raise your children making sure that you do the things to ensure that they reach their holy destiny all of those things but um marriage is and so why are we putting or giving all this effort to marriage why is god asking me to talk about how to divorce proof your marriage because it's the foundation it is the bedrock of all of society marriage is the foundation it is the bedrock of all all societies and when the marriage crumbles the society follows soon afterwards it is the bedrock for the family it is the bedrock for the community it's the bedrock of our nation the marriage the marriage the marriage so this is why the father really um, wanted me to take time to make sure that when you do get married that you stay married and that you reap the benefits of a godly marriage you know and so it's it's so awesome when I think about it you know now that I have insight and understanding you, you can have a male and a female that are in alignment with God's word and the destiny that God has dictated to them for the beginning of time and they could actually turn this entire planet into the Garden of Eden. Paradise. Oh man, I just, it's, the, the one of the interesting things about marriage and the, along with the um, four laws, also love, you know, love is so critical and we need to understand that there, the all every aspect of love 
needs to be bathed in the blood of Christ Jesus. We need to make sure because we have the what the first love is the um, love, the filé love, the the brotherly love, right? And if it's not bathed with the blood of Jesus, then you're going to have fair weather, friends, and you're going to be very disappointed. Okay, so you have to have the blood, the agape love, the blood of Jesus pour raining down on your filet love. And your spouse should be your friend. Yes, your spouse should be your best friend. Right? And then you have the love, the Eros love. And this is the love that most of us are familiar with and what is exclusively supposed to be in the marriage bed. And that's the sexual love, the sensual love. And this too must be bathed with the blood of Jesus so that you never abuse either spouse in the area of the of Eros love. That means sex is never used as a weapon against the spouse, right? Um, you don't do what I say, I cut you off. That should never happen in marriage. If it's bathed with the blood of Jesus, Eros love is to be a, to serve, to serve the needs of your spouse. To serve the needs of your spouse with pleasure and with love. And then we have the storge love. And that's the love that we're kind of familiar with as far as the love of the mother for the child or the love of the father for the child. This is almost the closest thing to unconditional love. And this too must be bathed with the blood of Jesus. If it is not bathe with the blood of Jesus. Then we have issues like incest. We have um, um, things happening in the family that is not of God because this love has crossed the boundaries and has not been bathed in the blood of Jesus. So we don't we don't have um, pedophilia. We don't have um, incest. We don't have the abuse of children by their parents by inappropriate behavior because this story gay love has been corrupted by Satan. It needs to be bathed in the blood of Jesus. And then, of course, agape love, which is the love of God, which means that you love that person so much that you will sacrifice, you will do whatever it takes to make sure that they benefit and that they fulfill their destiny. So this is another area where there should be a lot of of consideration in the house. So all of these love play out in the marriage, in the family unit, and it must be bathed with the blood of Jesus. Another great thing that if you are born again, you will operate in the fruits of the Spirit in your marriage. You will love. There will be love. There will be joy. Right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, and self-control. Self-control is so critical. And love is so critical. This is the holy disposition of God himself. And since we were made in his image, this is our disposition as well. So we, if we, and these are, these are supernatural things because you are to love what? Your enemy. And guess what? Sometimes you feel like your spouse is your enemy because you are not in agreement and you may be slipped into the flesh instead of walking in the spirit. 
And this causes, we know that whenever you walk in the flesh, you're bringing death and destruction into your relationships. And it's interesting because one of the premise that we say is that man is generally good, but that's not true. Man is generally wicked. His heart is generally wicked unless he or she is born again. Then that old heart, that whole, that old stony heart is removed and a new fleshly heart is replaced. So the fruits of the spirit should be transparent throughout the entire marriage and joy. The supernatural joy of the Lord should permeate the home and Joy is not happiness. You can have joy with all your circumstances. All your circumstances are against you, but you still have the joy of the Lord in you. You still want to do good. You still want to be kind. Oh, yes. Self-control. You hold your tongue. If your spouse says something that wounds you or hurts you, you don't retaliate and try to wound and hurt them too. You have self-control. You do not respond in kind. You take it to the throne. There was a season in my marriage. I, I had I got I got it a little bit. It was a season in my marriage where I finally realized that. I can't change my husband. I can't make him do anything or feel a certain way or come along with an agreement with me. I needed to go to the throne of God. So there was a season in my marriage where when I had an ought or not an ought, but a disagreement with my former husband, that I went to the throne of God and I prayed. And guess what? God moved on my behalf because I wasn't coming from a position of selfishness. I wasn't coming from a position of trying to manipulate and control my former husband. And so when we walk in the fruits of the Spirit in our marriage, we divorce Proof our marriage. Also, we need to ask for wisdom. I ask for it every day. Wisdom, insight, understanding, knowledge, the spirit of the Lord, and the quick understanding and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of might, the spirit of counsel, and the discernment of what? Spirits. This is critical that you walk in wisdom. Matter of fact, God specifically tells the man to live with his wife in understanding. Understanding is critical and you cannot get understanding if you're not connected with the mind of Christ. If you're not connected with Abba Father, you invite. If you're not connected with the Lord God, Holy Spirit, you will not have the insight, the understanding, the knowledge that you need in order to have a very successful marriage and divorce proof marriage. And what are the benefits of doing this? Oh, the benefits are just awesome. I mean, you have someone that you walked along in life that you know is for you and that wants the best for you and you are with each other in the twilight years of your marriage. I love watching elderly couples holding hands, male and female, just holding hands. You know they've been married for a long time and it's just, it just makes me so happy. So, I want to end this broadcast now, but I don't want to end it without saying Romans 10, 9. If you profess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ Jesus died, was buried, and rose again from the dead, if you accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you are saved. 
So thank you for once again. This will be a great 2020. We will see signs and wonders. We will, it will be a great um, 5,000, um, no, is it, is it 5,800, 80, 5,000, uh, 681? Uh, let me double check that Jewish calendar day. I know it's 81. Okay, so I think it's 5,681, if I'm not mistaken. So, this is the Jewish calendar, because they've already gone to a new year. And I just want to say that I appreciate you listeners listening to my broadcast. And now... The Lord has asked me to expand his work. He wants me to go into syndication. Um, He wants me to go into television. And I have been um, totally um, dependent on the Lord for the support of this ministry of entering the glory zone. And I would like for anyone who would like to support this ministry, support Enter the Glory Zone with Dr. Edith Davis. You can either send um, um, offerings or um, you want to give a gift. You can be a sponsor. Um, That's one level. You can be a donor, which is another level. And you can be a partner, which is another level. And you can reach out and send via Zelle. 816-678-6838 816-678-6838 That's 816-678-6838 And you can give via Zelle Or you can give via Cash, cash App Which is um, Dollar sign Edith Davis 58 But you can also find that information On the um, blog which is a Google um, platform and it also has the Zelle and the um, cash app ways to donating or you can have you can send it directly by mail um, P.O. Box 5275 Tallahassee Florida 32314 that's P.O. Box 5275 Tallahassee Florida 32314 so once again you can send on your donations your sponsorship or your partnership um, to via Zelle 816-678-6838 via Cash App dollar sign Edith Davis 58 or via mail P.O. Box 5275 Tallahassee Florida 32314 Thank you for once again joining me on Enter the Glory Zone on 94.1 FM Wave 94.